Hello, YouTube friends. Welcome to the Red Parrot channel. I am your host, Mary Ellen. Today, we are gonna be doing a Thrifty Thursday Thrifty Canucks open collaboration where I review items that I have been able to thrift and a um, couple of bits and bobs that I have been able to acquire at retail price. So let us get started. I have a nice Mondo cup of tea to keep me fueled through this. Not that it's necessarily large. Um, so the one thing I purchased at retail was these two Christmas bags. Um, I got them at our dollar store. They were $1.50 each. And I just love the holiday pattern. Um, I saw Carrie the Crafter break down a bag like this and create a journal. So essentially the journal becomes um, this. And I would like to try that. So add that to the ever increasing list of journals that I would like to make. So that's that, very pleased with that. Also on the Christmas theme, I got one of these. Uh, what is this you say? It's a bag of plaid, but not necessarily a bag just of plaid because it is a probably used to wrap some kind of a present. If you can see that there's an elastic here that is for this um, band and then a tie up here that I think we can undo. Let's see if we can undo it. Sure, why not? Oh, yes, we can. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, and those of you who have fo been following me for some time will know that one of the things I completely want to be able to do is do the um, pleating and then be able to get some nice uh, border frills. Um, you cannot see that because you can't see my see through my fingers. So essentially what I do is I use a sewing machine um, and a fork and then we just do some pleating and then sew it down the middle and then we have something nice. So I got a huge bag of this. So somebody, somebody did not want to have plaid ribbons and I said, I will relieve you of that, of that burden. And so now we've got some plaid and who doesn't like some plaid? It goes, it is not seasonal and it goes with so much. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, oh yes, under card goblin category, uh, three packs of cards. This is uh, an unopened, it's an unopened box of bicycle playing cards. I'll put that to the side. Next one, this one is really interesting. Uh, it is Gustav Klimt. And what happens is this is the card in terms of the, the pattern that exists. But if you flip it over, you see all kinds of different patterns of his art. I love that, that's pretty. Um, so you see every piece of art uh, is different. Yes, they are different, just slightly no yes yes they are different they just don't look it um oh i see what he's done he's done versions of the same thing kind of like van gogh and his versions of the sunflower in any event it's a really lovely deck of cards that's got lots of options and different color ways and so on and so forth. So it'll be nice to have a little dive into his art. The other thing that I'm just noticing now, which is really interesting, is there is a label. It, it identifies the piece of art um, and the size and the year that it was made, which is pretty great. So I was very pleased with that. these away and this which is a box of coca-cola playing cards that are really tight in the box so coca-cola is an international collectible brand and I don't collect any kind of coca-cola ephemera 
but I know how beautiful a bottle of, a, a bottle, a box of Coca-Cola cards could be. And that's uh, what they look like on the top side. And on the fun side, they have lots of uh, opportunities for various Coca-Cola logos, which is just a fun thing. It's a beautiful red, and I associate Coke with um, Christmas as well, because they were, I think, one of the early advertisers that used Santa Claus in their, um, in their marketing. So very pleased. Those two were premium cards, and this is just a lovely fresh box of playing cards. So put those aside. Um, mm -mm. So I think is everything else. Everything else from here on is books. Uh, recall last time where I had a similar package, but it was birds. So somebody somewhere probably bought the whole set. And my thrift store is slowly uh, releasing the sets, I guess, week by week. I don't know. Um, this is a Fandex Family Field Guide, um, North American Trees Identified by Leaf, Bark, and Seed. These are trees. And what happens here is they have a description. We have, uh, look at the leaf. And then on the back we have um, information uh, about it. So let's have a, a nice look through and see if I can identify any of these. Um, here, ash, there was a uh, terrible disease of ash borer, B-O-R-E-R, -R, it was a bug. Um, so there has been a tremendous loss of our ash trees and um, a lot of spraying to get rid of that um, pest. Uh, quaking aspen, which is really pretty in the fall. Uh, bald cypress, uh, American beech, uh, paper birch. Uh, birch is the um, the white barked tree, which is quite popular. So our First Nations people um, used birch in a variety of um, ways. I think it has uh, aspirin-like properties, and they also um, made canoes out of birch. So a birch canoe is something to be um, valued and admired. The workmanship to make one of those is phenomenal. A bit of buckeye, a catalpa. Catalpa has really interesting, very long bean fruits. Um, that's all I know about that one. Uh, black cherry, American chestnut, coffee tree. Coffee tree, apparently, um, I know these from golf courses. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, Cottonwood, dogwood, elm, ginkgo. Ginkgo is a, um, a very, very, very old tree. It um, was around, I think, when the dinosaurs were walking the earth as well. And you can tell that there isn't um, a lot of development of the leaves. So if you look at this kind of leaf here where you have like the, the um, sort of the main um, stem stalk and then the feeder branches that go out this does not have that central stem with the feeder out so it just goes straight out into the leaves and i think this is a good leaf for echo dyeing as well uh, hackberry downy hawthorn uh, hemlock which is Poison, maybe? I don't know. Hickory. Hickory is a tea, maybe. American holly. That's a Christmas. Uh, honey locust. Mm. Don't know that I know that. Uh, not a huge fan of the, the name. Why would you plant something that's called locust? Uh, common juniper. I've got a lot of these in the front, and I think we get gin from juniper. Uh, linden tree. Um... These are popular, I think, for dyers. I'm not entirely sure why. Let's, I'm going to leave it with that. A madrone, I've never heard of that. Magnolia, so this is also known as the tulip tree. And they are one of the first spring bloomers. And they have these gorgeous, lush flowers that come with the tree. Uh, red maple. Let's 
that's a Canadian symbol. Uh, mesquite honey. Red mulberry has lots of uh, lovely fruit that comes from it. Northern oak. Pawpaw. Um, there used to be a song way down yonder in the pawpaw patch. Uh, that's all I know about that. Common persimmon. Uh, Eastern white pine. Loblolly pine. Red bud. Eastern, Eastern red bud. Don't know those. Oh, I get these. Uh, red cedar. Cedar is another very um, popular tree for our First Nations people. They used the bark of cedar trees for weaving, dyeing, I think, um, and they are able to use create um, like a thread-like stuff substance with the bark. And there's probably also properties of the tree as well that I am not aware of. Uh, redwood, we do not have any of those around here. Sassafras, I don't think we have any around here either. Sourwood, blue spruce, that's another popular one around here. Um, it's spruce and it's blue, that's uh, all I can say about that. Sweet gum, sycamore, tulip tree, black tupelo, Black walnut, so this has this little fruit here, and this is in this area, and I use it um, fairly extensively for dyeing. It creates an incredible brown to tan dye, and it doesn't require any mordant. It is just a very strong dye. Uh, you need to wear gloves when you're breaking this apart because the juice is so reactive to um, the air and you get it on your skin and you'll have black hands until your um, skin peels away. Oh, weeping willow. Weeping willow is such a, a romantic tree, I think. And then we have the Pacific yew. So that's the tour of those. And again, very happy to have this. I think there's gonna be lots of options if we do some kind of a botanical tree, they are lovely for bookmarks, um, for fussy cutting of the actual leaves, um, being as a long tag as well. Um, also maybe as a belly band. So there's that. Happy with that. Uh, next up, next up is another book. This is called The Philosopher Cat. And I liked it because of the drawings. Okay, so Philosopher Cat by Quan Quen Shen. And it is copyright 2004. And I think this is kind of a take on the Taoism. Uh, and this is interpreted through cats. Uh, it takes a while to get going. And so, and these are the kinds of images that we would have. Um, I've also been taught to value text on one side, picture on another, and this book has that as a methodology. Here is the Chinese calendar, which is kind of fun, plus cats, and mm, plus cats, and cats and cats and cats and cats, and some nice poem snippets um, that would be interesting if I had a cat journal or was making a cat journal which should probably go on the list. One of the things that I like about the images is that they have um, a certain tone to them like a certain color tone and then an accent that you could match then to a color so this green, this dark green here would go nice in a journal where that color was featured. Um, this would be a lovely black and white journal. This would be a lovely that blue or this red journal. Oh, I love the fabric. It's got all this little paw prints. That's adorbs. Um, oh, my Lucy. so Lucy is my cat and she's also the executive producer of the show. And she does that uh, fairly frequently in the sunshine. And it's such a lush, beautiful position that she gets into. It's a high trust and also very relaxing. 
Um, this is a, just a sweet thematic as well. There's themes as well that you could pick out here. So a flower three theme, there's a, a dragonfly, um, there's some, mm, I don't know what kinds of flowers they are. I was going to say, um, mm. <sighs> this is the brain not accessing words. I'm going to turn the page. You can visually figure it out. Oh, okay. So this is a uh, process. So there's the, the beetle there, the flowers and the cat, same cat, the beetle has come over. I think that's a ladybug. Um, nice tea theme, more tea. Um, that's a nice yellow. I like that. Uh, that's hyacinth. Some more green. So what does this say? Aging gracefully. At 15, I made up my mind to study. At 30, I established myself. At 40, I developed clear vision. At 50, I understood the will of God. At 60, I heard and received the truth. At 70, I followed my heart without overstepping the boundary. That's by Confucius. Um, let's see, the understudy. What the leader likes, his subordinates like even more. It is like wind and grass. When the wind blows, the grass bends. Mensis which I believe is true. And if you happen to be a leader, you have an extraordinary responsibility to choose well for your subordinates. You don't make them fear. You don't make them um, do poor, bad things. You create processes that uh, allow them to thrive. You give them an opportunity for a good day's work and an opportunity of joy of my two cents. Um, those are beautiful. They look like morning glories. Oh, uh, Clematis? That's a nice, nice purple. Mm, that's a nice picture too. So you could make journal cards out of these, um, folded, you could crop them, um, you could make tags out of them, you could collage them into something larger, um, you could do a whole bunch of things and then I'll, like I said, fussy cut, or even just use the words from the, from the poems. You could even just keep it as a poem with a picture on the other side. There is a lot of space at the end here. So if you cut this out, let's for example say, it would be here and here you'd have that and then you'd still have space for journaling. Oh, look at the little turtle. Mm, that's nice. So very pleased with that acquisition. And I think there's lots of possibilities. Those are snowdrops. So oh, there's the philosopher cat um and so where are the next ones so oof, the next two are art and i already got into them i have already torn them apart to um get at some of the pages and just to see how that would work so the first one is called seasons a book for special days from the art institute of chicago um, some very nice uh, end pages. It is glossy. Um, and I'm looking for a year, 1985. And so I think this has just, again, there is a page of art and there is a, a page of not art. So you would be able to take this picture out and you could have journaling space on the back you could fold it over like 
um, this for a tuck tag. Um, you could fussy cut any of the, you know, the images if you wanted like that, and punch it out as a, as a duck. Um, and you could do a whole bunch of different things. Um, so this is, I think, Impressionist? Is that what it says? It doesn't, but I think there's probably a lot of Impressionist art in Chicago. That's um, So some of the pages have been torn out probably because there was information on it, and that's, that's perfectly fine. So some very nice art images that are here. That's a lovely suggestion of already a trifold. Some very mm, Renoir, yeah. He has such a an obvious style to him. And this is where I sort of tearing out pages. And when I was tearing out the pages, I was looking for colors, colorways specifically. So um, matching color, these three are all sort of in a, in a, a tone colorway. And I'm just, I don't know, for whatever reason, sort of interested in that as part of the making a journal experience. So the journal that I am doing now on math is blue. And so I was sort of flipping through here looking for that color of blue. This blue matches, this blue here is quite useful. Um, not so sure that the bathing cabins are, is it bathing cabins or are they trailers? I don't know, I can't tell the difference. And for whatever reason, I, I just didn't like the image. I liked the color, so I didn't use it. So anyways, there we are. Um, that's this book and then also a really nice end page. And a nice size of a book. Um, I really like books that have a, a hand to them, that it's a nice size that just seems um, comfortable to hold in the hand. So it's, I think, virtually identical to the last one. So that's an insight in my own... Um, preferences, I guess. Next one is Art Deco, Woman's Collection Address Book. And I got this very specifically because it is Art Deco. So it has uh, A's and then it has got um, small little drawings on the edges, some slightly more elaborate. And then they also have periodically a lovely large Art Deco image. I think Art Deco is one of my favorite eras in art. I just love that stylized, clean line look. Um, I love the lettering as well. It's just very pretty to me. Oh, goodness. Um, that's another one, she's veiled. Let's flip through the larger pictures. So there is one. That also would be a great picture for the math journal. It has blue, and it also has this sort of angular um, woman's body diving into the water, which I like, and also the concentric circles of the touching the water, which I think might be um, might be nice. Oh, I'm gonna do it this way. Next one is uh, more bathing. Uh, look at the dress. The dress is just so pretty. This reminds me of there is a public television channel here called PBS. It's um, from the States, but we get the, the feed through Buffalo um, and other spots. And they have programming and they have a style that seems to um, echo a lot of this as well, like uh, they do Poirot and they're opening to their mystery, um, mystery episodes have a very art, art nouveau feel. If I've been saying art deco, I didn't mean to say art deco, I meant to say art nouveau. Um, these dresses are pretty. Uh, what else do we have here? There's another one that's very black and white. 
These very pretty dresses. I love the dropped waists that they had in that time. Here's another one. I weirdly am accumulating um, car images and car material. So that should be another one on the list of journals that I need to make. Um, I should make that list and then sort of show it to everybody. And then we can have a laugh to see how long it's gonna take me to get through all of them. Um, this is also very stylized. That's a fun fountain. I like the way that fountain is portrayed. Again, those beautiful drop waists. Oh, I love them. And I'm just gonna go backwards because it's easier to flip this way. Hmm, that is very, uh, the Great Gatsby. That's what it reminds me of anyways. Um, that's the opera, I think. More parties, maybe very New Year's Eve. A lot of hats in this one, little small hats. Hmm, this one's very stylized. It'd be fun for a black and white journal. And is there one here? There isn't, no. So there's that one. So I have two art books and this is an interesting um, layout for the book. It is long ways as opposed to this ways. I could always change it, bust out the, um, uh, the spine here and put a new spine down there and have it open this way if I wanted to. So there's options there for us. Okay, and next, which one do I wanna do first? Uh, let us do this one first, because this is the first one that I saw. So this is clearly me getting into a bit of the Christmas mood. It is called The Story of Santa Claus. And I did a quick flip through. I saw one page and that one page sold me on. I needed to have this book. So uh, let's do a quick flip through and we will uh, show you what that page is. Some of these images in here are just spectacular. I love this globe. So it says the story of Santa Claus by Scribbler, by Scribbler Elf, illustrated by the elves. It's an Ariel Books, Turner Publishing, Inc., Atlanta. Uh, and that's a beautiful picture of Santa Claus. Uh, and let us find the date. 1993, 1993, and it says by Armand Eisen. And this is a first edition. Well, there we are. So the foreword starts off. How do reindeer fly? Are elves invisible? Why do you live at the North Pole? How do all the presents fit into your sleigh? Do you ever get lost? Curious children from all over the world write me letters by the thousands, asking these questions and many, many more. And I think that this is um, his or answer to those questions. Um, so it's not really exciting so far, but now we can get into, oh, look at that, oh, that once, once upon a time. I love that large leader capital letter um, to start off a good tale. A good tale starts, I think, with one of those. Um, and this is his workshop, and of course there's a cat. Slightly creepy, not gonna lie. Nutcracker, um, buddy here poking in the window. Yeah, kind of creepy. This is a lovely image. I like this one a lot. And... Some more images. This, I love this picture. This is so pretty. And some nice little fussy cut um, images. You could make clearly a, um, a free form pocket out of that. This I think is a beautiful rendition of Santa Claus. 
same with this. The blues are lovely and more sort of beautiful fussy cut uh, items. Um, this girl is particularly pretty. Love these animals. These, those, the animals are really the, the keeper. Ooh, little bunny rabbit, little bunny. And unexpected for a Christmas uh, book is uh, spring. And we have more Santa, and we have the the naturalists would say, what are the penguins doing with the polars? Because they the penguins are South Pole, and polar bears are North Pole. But this is magic land. This is the image that sold me on the book. I needed to get this book for this image alone because essentially this is a map of the North Pole and who does not want a map of the North Pole? I love having maps of imaginary places, um, you know, being able to sort of see where they, are, where they are, how they're connected. There's lots of design ideas and it just helps with the imagination of, oh yeah, I can sort of imagine them walking down this way and watching down that way. Also, the rose is hilarious because in the middle it's north and all four directions go south, which I think is also a um, an unusual um, effect of a North Pole. If you didn't see that it was the North Pole and all of these words were eliminated, you would probably be able to figure out what this was a map a map of just because of the unique. Um, rose signature oh look at these these are animals and animals beautiful fussy cuts um and be able to create you know pockets and whatever whatnot love that color that's just so nice blues and purples and yellows very pretty more blue another beautiful image there some more animals. I like that picture a lot. Oh, well, I like the sleeping quarters of the elves. That's uh, pretty great. Kind of like that they have hammocks. And more fussy cuts. This would make a beautiful um, belly band or a side tuck. And there's. Santa and Mrs. Claus, and of course there's got to be cats by the hearth. And the elves in the toy shop, and more elves in more toy shops. Ooh, and here's the kitchen. Mm -mm -mm. Look at all that's. Look at all that yummy. I love those thumbprint cookies, shortbreads and thumbprints. They've got donuts. They've got mince pies, fruit cake, rolled um, cake cupcakes, little tarts. Mm, we could spend some time on this. Um, I'm going to think that this, yes, must be like a candy land. Oh, it's called the Candy Caves. My mistake. Some more images. Ah, that's a beautiful photograph. Not photograph, image, picture. Oh, and a larger globe with the one that's in the front, which is quite beautiful. Oh. Oh. I'm always surprised when I get something at the thrift store. I get here, I start filming it, and then I realize that there's something completely different and more and extra in what I have purchased. And this is another great example of it. And then this book goes into The Night Before Christmas by Clement Seymour. Was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were all hung by the chimney with care and hoped that St. Nicholas soon would be there. Huh. It's a shame that they put this beside it. I guess it's a children's book, so they're not going to actually put in the recipe. That's too bad. Oh, look at that. That is a feast. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. That's beautiful with the northern lights. Mm, that is a very pleasant book. I am very excited about that. This is a large format. And so 
um, different from the other sort of smaller versions that I had been showing. Um, and I think that might be okay, but this is certainly would be a, um, what does Cindy at Studio Lou say? She got harvest it. I think that's what she calls it. Um, great book for being able to do that. Uh, we have two more left. This is the next one. This is Deck the Hall. Family Memories and Activities, Contemporary Illustrations by Donna Green. Is it Deck the Hall or is it Deck the Halls, plural? I always thought it was Deck the Halls. Deck the Halls. Yeah, I always say Deck the Halls. And so that we only have one hall. Mm, I don't know that we only have the one hall. Certainly not only one spot that is decked. Um, let's see what... So Contemporary Illustrations by Donna Green. It is a gallery books. It is copyright 1990 by Deanne Ermey or Erme. And so already we have some lovely images that we can pull out. Now this is sort of a, um, a record book for Christmas. And so this one actually has some recipes um, some, you know, fun inspiration and, and so forth, some stories and whatnot. It also has got the line pages, which who doesn't want that? If you are going to create a uh, Christmas journal, I think you can tear these pages out. It looks like I can see the threads. Um, ooh, mold cider, warm cider in a saucepan with a stick of cinnamon, several cloves and a dash of nutmeg. Simple and comforting. Um, mm -mm. This is some quotes. That's by um, Charles Dickens. A plum pudding. Potato print wrapper paper. Oh, hey, this is a this is one hundred percent a junk journal opportunity. Um, and basically, you take a potato, you cut it in half. And then you basically have a carvable space with potato. Um, you can carve in, you can carve out as a relief, and then acrylic paint, and then you stamp on uh, brown paper, white paper, text paper, whatever you want, and you have some very easy um, ability to make stamped images. Walnut shell candies. Um, so this would be, you know, once again, beautiful belly band, side tuck, um, journal card, holiday menus, lots of little bits and pieces in here, which I think will be very enjoyable. Pine cone decorations, gather pine cones, any brown cone and heat them in a warm oven, 150 to 200, that's probably Fahrenheit, for... 20 minutes to melt resin, kill insects and open the cones fully. So you would put that on wax paper, not wax paper. Um, mm, that kind of paper that, that you put underneath cookies so that you don't want that goo on everything. Uh, paint the cones with watered down white glue for a shiny fish finish. And while the glue is, <laughs> and while the glue is still wet, sprinkle with tiny shiny sprinkles. So I will not be doing the sprinkling because this is a glitter-free home. Um, you could also get them open and then just paint the tips with a white and create that sort of snow effect. If you um, support the use of glitter in your various abodes, feel free to glitter those up. That is a personal choice of mine. Uh, you do you. And let's see if I can, oh yes, yeah, there are signatures. So you can pop that open and you can see the threads that are in there that would be easily taken apart. When I need to take these apart, what I do is I take a, a seam ripper and I use the sharp end just to scoop under and then poke them all. It seems to be an easy way to, to do that. So there we are. And last but not least, I completely unexpectedly found an Ideals Christmas issue. Um, ideals are 
not in publication anymore, I don't think, but they are a very warm and friendly and gentle um, magazine that was created. Um, and they have seasons, they have um, uh, straightforward ones that are no season in particular, just a collection of things. Um, what does this say? This is volume 34, number six, November. And this is best wishes for 78, Roy Carroll and Roy Jr. Hines. Okay, uh, before we get too far in, I would have a fight with myself on which image to use. Love those trees. Um, and so this is, again, being able to use these images for um, journaling cards, for you know belly bands, tuck spots, uh, scrap paper. Ooh, wow, love those snowflakes. Use them as pages as well, be able to cut out some of the... Um, the the poetry and the words um this would be a fun one to, to watercolor and insert um christmas cookies no recipes though hmm, sad um i'm just gonna Ooh, that's a pretty one the story of the holly sprig from saint nicholas magazine copyright 1907 Nativity. And more nativity and more Christian stories oh, and so that's the book cover and what a lovely image that is so nice that would make such a lovely page in a journal and pages oh cards actual Christmas cards Some of these medallions would be lovely to cut out as a journal card and then do some light watercoloring or even just pencil crayon or crayon crayon even. Um, this looks like a stop motion set. Oh, and yes, Virginia, there is a Christmas. This is the, um, the famous Letter to the Editor, which featured, first appeared in The Sun, September 21st, 1897. Virginia O'Hanlon. And the end says, No Santa Claus? Thank God he lives, and he lives forever. A thousand years from now, Virginia, nay, ten times ten thousand years from now, he will continue to make glad the heart of childhood. And I believe the essence of Christmas is what Santa Claus is, of giving peace, harmony, charity, empathy, all of those wonderful things. I think that's what Santa Claus is. Ooh, animals. Beautiful journal card there, beautiful journal card there. A bunny rabbit and some squirrels and some raccoon uh, maybe a ferret nice hearth more drawn images not per cat these are fun little fussy cut images if you wanted to use that for that christmas pup because heaven forbid we should not have just a cat we need a dog too and for the record, I am an equal opportunity pet. I like dogs and I had a dog growing up and now that I'm adult, I have a cat. Hmm. This is probably general interest. Um, and some more blue. Oh, that's a beautiful stained glass. That's also a beautiful stained glass fussy cut. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Um, candlelight. 
some more. These photographs are really lovely. You could use that as a journal page and maybe turn this up, um, maybe up to, to here so you could still see the house. Uh, country choir practice. Christmas time. Oh, I like the clock. So this is uh, the last, leave the last page for uh, New Year's. And then the second part of that beautiful photograph. And there we are. So that is the Christmas issue of Ideals. And I think this brings to a happy conclusion uh, this Thrifty Thursday. So this has been Thrifty Thursday, Thrifty Connects. It's been an open collaboration. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more episodes and we'll see you soon. Bye now.